So a little bit of a history lesson for you. Once upon a time, Birmingham Small Arms, or BSA, was the biggest motorcycle brand in the world. They were bigger than the Japanese Big Four or any European or American motorcycle brand. And in fact, one of every four motorcycles sold in the world during that time was a BSA. And then, they were gone. And now, they're back and they are here in the Philippines. So let's find out if this BSA 650 deserves a gold star. In this episode, I'll be in Now I want to talk about the aesthetics first because when I was in Spain, they explained to me that their goal was to really, as much as possible, pay homage to the OG Gold Star. And well, they kind of got it. In fact, it's just a slightly more modern version than the original uh, motorcycle. Now I love classic motorcycles and it doesn't really get much more classic than this. When you look at it, the profile of the bike, I think it looks absolutely perfect. I'm, you know, the styling is great. The, this is a little bit too big for me, in, in, in my opinion. I think they could have uh, made it a little bit smaller, but they, that, might have, that may have affected the amount of heat that you feel uh, when you're riding the motorcycle. Now, if you look at this, I mean, how big that fender is, the way it, it looks. I mean, that's the way it was back in the day. And of course, the spoke wheels, it's quite nice. The headlight, it is halogen. I wish, again, uh, I know it's a classic motorcycle. But at night, not the best, uh, not the best headlight at all. But again, classic, so a little bit forgivable. The dials, again, it looks like the way it did back in the day. I wasn't there, Kako was, so he made me cuento, and this is the way things look back in the day. Um, but it, 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 they kept it as OG as possible. They have this little uh, indicator here, which in all honesty, <laughs> under direct sunlight, when you're sitting on the bike, you don't even see it. But it's just there purely for aesthetics, in my opinion. Um, but again, it's a nice touch. It's, it's a little bit different. You don't really see that in other motorcycles. So I do appreciate it. Now, even the gas cap is old school. It even says 1903 uh, on, the, on the gas, on the, on the fuel cap. Of course, it's got that, that very important BSA logo. Uh, we haven't seen that on a motorcycle in quite some time. So it is nice uh, to see that back in a motorcycle. Um, the switch gears, they're a little bit more modern. Uh, you could, they don't feel super premium, but they also don't feel cheap. They don't feel budget, but they're right there in the middle, uh, if you ask me. And uh, to make it a little bit more modern, because we, you know, it is 2024, they have a charging station right here for your gadgets. The mirrors actually look quite good, but if you're, <laughs> If you're going about 60 kilometers per hour, they become virtually useless because the vibrations of the bike uh, will, well, you just don't, you don't, don't even bother using them because you won't see anything. Uh, and that's, that leads me back to the vibrations, right? The vibrations uh, is quite significant on this motorcycle. Again, it is a single and they wanted to pay homage to the way it was back in the day. Back in the day, but motorcycles were, <laughs> had a lot of vibrations. So they achieved that part. In fact, the reason why they kept it a single when most bikes are doing twins was because they wanted to be as OG as possible. They could have made this a twin. In fact, they told me in, back in Spain that they probably would have spent less money and the bike would have been more affordable if it was a twin. But because, again, they wanted to be as close to the OG gold star as possible, they kept it a single. There's another part that I do like about the bike. Uh, usually you will see, you know, rubber around here. I like the fact that this is solid. Now I think the indicators are quite nice. I don't like them super big and just bulky like, you know, how other motorcycles have them. I think that's very tastefully done, very minimalist uh, for, for, for those people who don't like big indicators. Stopping power is provided by Brembo Brakes. The front is a dual piston sliding Brembo caliper on a 320 millimeter floating disc. 
and the rear is a single 255 millimeter disc clamped on a single piston Brembo caliper. The tires are modern, but I do like it. A bit, you know, kind of retro. It, I think it's quite similar to that of the uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor. You get the fabled Pirelli Phantom Sport Cops on both ends that are 100 by 90 on 18s in the front and 150 by 70 on 17s for the rear. The damping duties are thankfully not like bikes of yore. You got a 41 millimeter telescopic fork in the front, right side up, and twin shocks at the rear with five steps of adjustable preload. The bike is powered by a 652cc single cylinder that makes 45 horsepower and 55 newton meters of torque. The misleading part about this engine right here is that it has a radiator up front. It's actually liquid cooled. The BSA Gold Star 650 comes with a five speed manual transmission. Of course, no quick shifter, no nothing actually. And the first gear is quite short, while the last few are really long. Now, one thing that I wish that they, you know, if I were to nitpick a little bit more about the bike, the side stand is quite short. If you're in an off camber place, if, you know, slightly inclined, and you try to put the bike down, it, it feels kind of awkward. In fact, we look at the way the bike leans uh, on the side stand, and it's a little bit more, you know, it leans a little bit more than other bikes typically would. Now, the fuel tank capacity is 12 liters, and Team Motodeal was able to get around 20 to 25 kilometers per liter with mixed conditions. That's city uh, riding and a little bit of highway as well. The wet weight of the bike is 213 kilograms, and that's actually not so bad. Uh, it's lighter than it, some of the competitors, like the Royal Enfield Interceptor, which makes it easy to maneuver the bike in city traffic. Now the seat height is a very Pinoy friendly 780 millimeters. I'm five foot six with a 764 millimeter inseam. And that is the situation. Now it may be a classic, but it's you know not carbureted. It is fuel injected. So this is what a BSA 650 Gold Star sounds like in 2024. So the, the seat is actually nice and comfortable. It's perfect, if you ask me, if you ride two up. Uh, the rear foot pegs are there. You have the nice BSA logo in the back. The stitching is actually decent. And you have a British flag right here. Of course, you know, the bike, the, the brand BSA originated uh, from the UK. Uh, but this bike right here, the new BSA, they're actually built in India. So let's talk about the seating position first. I mean, this bike was really built to be comfortable because the seat is comfortable, the seating position is comfortable, the ergonomics just right, if you ask me. Uh, I guess, you know, it's if, you, if this was a time machine, which it kind of is because it's taking you back in time, uh, it's, this is the way the bikes were before. I mean, this is the position uh, that bikes, you know, that early day motorcycles were like. And it, it, that's what you get with this BSA 650. Now, the new BSA, if you want to call it that, uh, built this bike from the ground up. And they, they really, you know, there, there's nothing, I guess, because it, they are coming back, right? It's, it's a new company. Technically, it's a new company using an old brand. And they had nothing um, to, to really work from before. So they really had to build this from the ground up. And they did a fairly good job at it, to be honest with you. What BSA really wants to do is capture the spirit and nostalgia associated with this brand from back in the day. And they incorporate modern engineering, a little bit of technology that will cater to today's riders. Now the bike, it's, well, it's pretty vibey everywhere. And you know what? It's actually okay. Especially at higher RPMs, I mean, as I mentioned, going at 60 kilometers per hour because uh, well at the EIX you can't go faster than that it the, the, it's you can definitely feel the vibrations now to some people it may be good vibrations 
But for others who are more used to modern bikes, it's probably gonna be a little bit, um, let's just say you have to get used to it to really enjoy it. I mean, it's kind of an acquired taste like that. Like old school riders will probably enjoy this more because it, rem it reminds them of the early days of motorcycling. Now this bike really likes to chill more than anything. It wants to just, you know, cruise along and just be, you know, unapologetic cruising along the highway or ar around city streets. It's not something that I would, uh, it's not something that I would push much at all. It's just basically you're going, you know, your daily ride that you just want to chill and look good while doing it. And this bike does that very well. But, however, if you do give it the beans, this engine is still, remember, it is a 652cc single cylinder. And you will feel the weight of the piston punching you forward. And while it may not be as smooth as a twin or as fast as a twin in a straight line, from a launch, so from the very beginning, from standstill, the engine is very punchy and it has a pretty good performance, you know, in, in, the, lower, in the lower range. Now it does like to operate in short bursts of energy, not prolonged stints of acceleration. Just a little bit, you know, just a little bit of, uh, you know, just a little short twist of the throttle. Uh, you know, tw twins, again, twins are smooth pretty much all throughout. And this is, you know, it gets, it gets the juices flowing a little bit. It's a little bit more excitable. But like all single cylinder motorcycles, it's, you know, it's, got, it's full of character. And that's the way this bike is. You know, for starters, when you downshift and you engage the engine brake a little bit, you'll hear a little bit of whee, like a little whine. You'll hear, you'll hear that a little bit. Whee. Anyway, I'll let you hear it uh, from the engine. And this is one of the things that make the engine and then this bike a little bit more memorable to ride because it is quite unique. Add to the fact that the chassis is rather, you know, pretty lightweight for a classic motorcycle. You know, the, um, the, the Royal Enfield Interceptor and Continental uh, 650 GT, those are heavier than this bike. Um, even the, the Kawasaki, um, the W, the W Kawasaki, that's also heavier than this bike. Um, so this is a lot, it's significantly lighter. And because of that, I think it actually, you know, it, it rides very well, to be honest with you. And for a classic of this class, and, and well, at least on paper, it seems pretty heavy going over the 200 kilogram mark, but the weight is distributed, you know, pretty well across its wheelbase. It manages to hide it. It really does manage to hide that weight, uh, unlike some of the other bikes in its class, like the, the, the Kawasaki W800, you can't hide that weight. You feel it right away. And this one, it's lower. It lowers center of gravity. Now, I remember trying this uh, when I was in Spain and the suspension, I didn't think it was bad. <laughs> I thought it was actually pretty good. But riding it here in the Philippines, in the NCR, on EDSA, especially C5, <laughs> and maybe some parts of the highways around in the Philippines, it's not great. It is, you, can, you definitely will feel it. Um, it's, it's, it, it, you could do, you could, it is a, it is a soft suspension, don't get me wrong, uh, but you will feel uh, d definitely the bumps in the road. Now, maybe we need to play around a little bit with the preload settings, uh, but out of the box, when you get it from the showroom floor, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty standard weight for a rider, uh, for a rider, I should say. It's, it's plush and it's kind of what is expected, but you will still feel the bumps a lot more than I did when I was in Spain riding this thing around. Let's talk about the competition. I have mentioned the Continental uh, GT RE and of course the Interceptor, and that's really what comes to mind when I ride this bike. Um, because you know, you look at it, it's, they're both classics. They both were um, former UK uh, motorcycle brands. They're now built in India. Um, another Royal Enfield that it kind of reminds me of is the Classic 500. Um, it's, it actually might be a little bit closer to the Classic 500 than the Interceptor. Um, but because of the price range, I'd like to think about the Interceptor more uh, than, than the uh, Classic 500. Now, it, this is a little bit more refined than the Classic 500, but not too much more that it, it's, it's gonna be too modern. Um, and so it's, the experience is still classic, right? I mean, it's, 
BSA is a classic motorcycle brand, and they kept you know, the feel of a classic motorcycle with this bike. And speaking of the price range of this motorcycle, um, that's, that's something that's uh, gonna be uh, probably talked about a lot. So let's head back to the office and discuss a little bit more about what this motorcycle is gonna cost uh, any BSA fans out there here in the Philippines. Conclusion. Well, BSA wanted to remain authentic, right? I mean, there's not many single cylinder uh, middleweights out there. And they wanted to be a little bit more unique, to pay homage to the history of the brand. In fact, I, I think they did a pretty good job uh, at that. But at a price tag of 536,000 Philippine pesos for this motorcycle right here, it is, well, a little bit on the steep side. For context, the Royal Enfield Interceptor starts at 400,000 Philippine pesos. However, if you're a fan of motorcycle history, if you're a fan of the brand BSA, then maybe, just maybe, the bike is worth it. For more information about this bike on the MCs out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. I'm Gene Rafino. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be on.